Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Okay. Now, before you attack Does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hey everyone, DJ here. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and with the introduction of Innistrad Midnight Hunt, we have a whole bunch of sets rotating out of standard, and whenever there's standard rotation, we as commander players look for those cheap cards that we can pick up and slot into our commander decks to put into our staple binders. And so Ikoria is the subject of this video, and it is a phenomenal set full of interesting mechanics and exciting cards. To understand the set's impact on Commander, let's look at the top 10 Ikoria cards that are seeing play in Commander decks according to EDH Rec. Now, this data is a little bit skewed. The first thing I gotta do is just take out the top five, because the top five are all the same thing. They're the Triumphs. The Triumphs are a great shout out anyways. If you need fixing, the Triumphs are spectacular. You can fetch them, you can cycle them away. They are amazing. Unfortunately, they're not as cheap as they used to be. Their prices went all over the place. Yes, they were played in standard. You would hope the price would come down, but they haven't come down that much. Look, if you're worried about their reprinting or if you need them in a deck, maybe even spend a little bit more and get those alternate art versions that look gorgeous. I think those are a little bit safer from reprints. Hopefully we get Triumphs in a lot of our decks because I think they're really, really good. Okay, but after all the Triumphs, let's get into the top 10 cards that are seeing play. First up, we've got Ruinous Ultimatum. It's got insane color requirements, but just destroying all your opponent's stuff, all of it is just game winning. Of course I would include this in my deck, it's amazing. Next up, we've got Eerie Ultimatum. Just as powerful, just return everything of mine. Like these effects are over the top and that's exactly what commander decks are all about. Next, we have a companion, Gigantha the Wellspring. This is just like the biggest, fattest elk of a mana dork out there. And of course, there are a lot of combos that can come along with Giganta. Whirlwind of Thought is number four. Whirlwind of Thought is just guys, so it's not fitting in a ton of different decks, but this ability to just churn cards into more cards is super powerful. Next up, we have a very powerful, but quite mean card with Dranith Magistrate. Just shut down your opponent's commanders, just like that. Uh, sometimes white hate bears need some sort of interaction on this level, so I'm happy to play a Dranth Manor just straight or play against it. Next up at number five, we've got another ultimatum, Genesis Ultimatum. This has you searching really deep and cheating things into play. It's just a fun card. I'm not surprised it sees play in our format. At number six, we've got Bastion of Remembrance. If you play an Aristocrats deck, if you're sacrificing creatures, you want this effect. I love that it's on an enchantment because it's a little bit more resilient to removal than your classic Blood Artist. Next up, we've got Mythos of Nithroi. Uh, it's a three mana removal spell at instant speed, which is fine, but if you sync Abzan do, into it, three different colors, you just destroy any non-land permanent at instant speed. And that's a pretty solid removal. I'm, I'm excited about playing that type of card. I really do think though that you need to be those three colors and those three colors reliably for this to be a removal spell that overtakes some of the other more efficient removal spells we have. Next up, we've got Migration's Path. I honestly think that this is one of the best ramp spells that you can play. I know that it's four mana, so it's a little bit of that slower ramp for adding two lands on the battlefield, but what I love is the cycling. Because if you're in the mid game and you wanna to get to something big, Migration's Path gets you there. If you're in the late game and you're just looking for action, it gets you one card deeper. So it really does get you what you want in commander games right when you need it. And finally, we've got Mythos of Snap Dax. This is a solid uh, board wipe, but honestly, like you should just be playing Tragic Arrogance. It's a little bit easier to cast. You don't have to have that uh, black and red requirement in there. You still get to choose everything. And so I'm actually surprised that this is as high up as it needs to be when Tragic Arrogance isn't seeing a ton of play compared to other board wipes. So some key themes to this set and some shout outs have gotta be the ultimatums. We can see them, a lot of them in the top 10 right there. Of course, the Triumphs already mentioned, but also companions. I think that sometimes we minimize companions because they don't work well as companions in our format. I, I loved the deck building restriction on them, but they were so broken in 60 card formats that they needed that rules change and then suddenly it just wasn't really worth it for Commander. Let me know in the comments down below if you play companions the way they're supposed to be. You know, I'm a huge fan of just companions in the 99. In fact, I think Lurus of the Dream Den is just 
an amazing card. And I think that the price reflects that a little bit, coming in around 750. Uh, and I've seen it as expensive as, you know, 15, 20, 30 dollars at times as the spikes went up and down as it was making waves in other formats. Um, I know that we don't prioritize small casting cost things as much, but like getting back baubles and soul rings and special one drops and mother of runes and all of this value that you can get in the lower CMCs, I think that Loris is fantastic and I've used it in a bunch of different decks to have a really big impact. And so I think that Loris, uh, although it might not be the cheapest pickup, is a powerful one for Commander. If you're looking for a more Commandery effect, like a big effect, then Obosh in the 99 is definitely powerful. And I think that people wanna overthink it and make sure that everything in their deck is odd to always trigger Obosh. But like, you could just build your deck normally and Obosh can still double only part of your deck and still have it be phenomenal. I, I think we all have like the feel bads, uh, cause I built an Obosh deck as companion and then when the rule changed, it was just like not worth it anymore. It felt bad and so I, left Obosh out of a bunch of different decks, but I mean, Obosh is under 50 cents and it's a damage doubler. It's real, real good. So maybe check that out. All right, a few more reminders from this set of things that you could pick up is Godzilla. See, this is a little bit confusing because the actual Godzilla, Godzilla King of Monsters, a gruel card, was released as a promo. And even though it was given the name Zilortha, Zilortha Strength Incarnate, like Zalortha appears nowhere <laughs> in the set at all. So instead we just have this promo Godzilla King of Monsters and it has a really unique ability. Whenever you have cards that change the rules of magic, uh, they work really well with like other things printed later. So I wouldn't be surprised if one day someone prints some card and then Godzilla King of Monsters becomes this really cool interaction that you wish you had. One other thing you might want to pay attention to is uh, Void Beckoner, specifically the Godzilla printing of it. They printed Space Godzilla Death Corona. And then in the midst of the pandemic, Wizards realized that was very unlucky wording. They, we just released a card called Death Corona when the coronavirus is causing death. So they apologized a bunch. They changed the printing. In some areas, it'll be Space Godzilla Void Invader. Um, but the Death Corona ones are out there. I don't know, at $3, it feels like this could be an interesting piece of history. All right, but let's talk about a card that was played in Standard and is underplayed in Commander, and that's Extinction Event. This is a card that targets odd or even, and I think a lot of people really want their board wipes to take out everything. But when you can engineer a one-sided board wipe, it is incredibly powerful and incredibly popular. Just remember Ruinous Ultimatum, like that was such a popular card. You can work around your own extinction event and make it super duper good. So I think that more people should be running Extinction Event. You can play around it. I have faith in you. You can target what you want to get rid of. It's going to be great. Actually, Ikoria has held a lot of value as a set. I mean, cards like Shark Typhoon and Luminous Broodmoth and the Ozolith, like all of these are interesting and they see tons of play. And I, and I think they should be higher up in the list of important cards, but they also haven't uh, lost a lot of money. Uh, but you know, if I'm gonna give a shout out to a card that is very powerful and very cheap, it's gonna be Titan's Nest. Listen, Titan's Nest has the potential to be a phenomenal card. I. I labeled it as one of the most powerful cards uh, as the set came out and it did like nothing. It's 22 cents. I still think it's good. And so I really hope that someone somewhere is playing Titan's Nest and it's impressing your friends and they're like, how are you doing all this mana so many things? And it's all because of Titan's Nest. Uh, anyways, that's gonna be my, my shout out even though those other three cards are better. Ikoria was one of my favorite sets. I hope you like it and I hope you can find some interesting cards to buy from this set. 
If you do want to buy some cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. They're phenomenal. They're the sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. If you use the coupon code JUMBO5, you'll save 5% off your order. I also want to thank my patrons. They're amazing. They support me every single day. This channel would not happen without them. Thank you, patrons. And thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what Ikoria cards you're playing in your Commander decks. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.